right, there we go. We are recording. Test, test, radio check. Test. Looks good. Gino. You, you. Test, test. Looks good. Gene, say something. Uh, hello, Moto. Very nice. All right. This episode, we're going to be just chilling. It's probably just a review. We haven't done a review episode in probably about a week. Because <laughs> we're kind of out of ideas for a little bit. But let's get ready to rumble. Oh, uh, let's see. That sounds good. Let's get this party started then. We've only got a little bit because we got to be responsible adults and go pick up our kid. So we'll definitely be done with this before 8.30. So rock and roll. Sit back and relax. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Chainsaw Bar. I'm your host, Mike. Today I'm joined with the usual suspects. Madeline. Gino Benelli. And Gina, we are good. Let's see. This episode we're just going to be doing some review stuff, some basic questions, and just goofing off kind of, just to put some content out there and let people hear our pretty voices. Our horrible voices. Speak for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I sound great. Oh, I haven't smoked a cigarette. I just got up. I sound derpy. <laughs> All right. So, let's see. How's yeah, everybody... Get my cigarette was going. <laughs> Terrible. How's everybody been this week? Oh. Uh, you know. Hmm. It's actually, you know, you live with me, so... Son yeah. had a sinus infection. Then yeah. he got a rash from the antibiotics. Then we had like a tragedy strike our community as just like oh God, all kinds so... of stuff. Yeah, it's been a rough, weird It's been a doozy. Week. It's been a doozy week. And before that, you know, we had company from out of state, so that was nice. They didn't turn out to be that bad people. They were pretty fucking cool. <laughs> that was fun. That made it pleasant. So, yep. Son had a friend with his friend, and all was good. And all the fars and stuff that happened, that was crazy. Oh, yeah. How, they uh, get close to you? Yeah, man. It's, uh, there's like three or four around here. Yeah. yeah. Not as bad as and, Texas. And it was people from Colorado uh, that came to help fight the fire. Oh, nice. wow. That's cool. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Yeah, that's wild. I wonder if those were intentional. I wonder if somebody set those. That's no, uh, I thought it was, but... Jared told me uh, that it was the power lines arcing when the wind was blowing. Oh hell! It was the is the power lines. Oh well, damn, that's crazy. Hope nobody so lost. I, I thought it was intentional, but no, it wasn't. It was uh, is the uh, uh, power lines arc. Jeez. Damn, that's wild. Yeah, we've had some crazy wind this week. It's just been oh, super yeah. windy here in Western cool. Carolina. I mean, dude, I'm telling you what, when, when you see wind pick water up off a creek, that yeah. was insane. Yeah, that's pretty windy. Yeah, it was it was miserable. They then brought the cold in. It was, it's been a doozy week. But, all right, let's do some review stuff. I'll start with you, Maddie. Yeah. What, what's your favorite movie time food? We haven't asked that one in a while. Favorite movie time food? Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm going to go with popcorn. Noise. What about classic. you? Classic. Yeah, it is classic. Can't hate that. What do you like to have? What you, what's your preferred movie time food there, Gino? I'm with her on the popcorn, but here lately I've been eating pizza, and now I'm so sick of pizza, man. It's horrible. <laughs> Dude, I just got in eat pizza. I got my, I've eaten like three fucking pizzas. <laughs> yeah, you were... Eating pizza last night when we talked to you. <laughs> yeah, I was eating pizza just a little bit ago. And that's how you get foundered. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, now I'm just like, God dang, I'm done with frozen pizza. <laughs> oh, they're frozen. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, you've been pizzaing out there, Pizza the Hut. Dude, I'm telling you what, man, I'm, I've been doing my own reviews on pizzas, and they're awful. Which one's the best or the worst? The best one was uh, Jack's Pizza. Jack's Pizza. I don't think I've ever even heard of that. I've never even heard of that brand. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like a Midwestern uh, uh, pizza that's been around since the 60s. The Midwest, where you think of when you think pizza. You get, you get the Charlotte, <laughs> Chicago. Come on, Chicago's Midwest. Yeah, Is it? Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Kind of. You got Detroit. They got their own slice. Big, thick We ass. just had to throw away like a homemade pizza because... Left it sitting on the counter for a minute and turned around and the cat was up there licking it. That little bastard. The like pizza homemade pizza with was, prosciutto. was the one I came up on when I uh, came up to Yenz's houses and it was great. Oh yeah. Um, it was great. Yeah, that was the, the our fire oven thing. Yeah, it's in a it's a wood fired pizza oven. DIY. You can look on YouTube. It uses an yeah, exercise Mike made ball. It. I used an exercise ball. You guys can go go do it on the line and do the same thing. So we used it. Turned out pretty good. It's pretty stable. Makes a damn it fine was awesome. pizza. I'll tell you what, that was a great pizza. It wasn't the the pizza that I've been getting. It tastes like a salt block. <laughs> oh god, that's terrible. I, like I said, I, like a I, I, I eat a lot of damn salt, but uh, yeah. Even my girlfriend was like, "Oh, you you didn't get enough salt." I'm like, uh, this is like, damn, eating a salt block. Ew. All right, there, freaking horse boy. Just I was picturing the salt a block. cow licking yeah. the salt lick. Licking the salt lick. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fucking bad. I ain't gonna name name the name. It was if Jack's Pizza was pretty damn good. All right. All right. So, like, for me personally, I, I if I can get a slushy at an amphitheater, I'd love it. Like, a slushie is pretty much my favorite thing I get. But otherwise, it's like popcorn. Popcorn is just kind of the standard gold yeah. go-to. If, like, you can't get slush as a drink, definitely just got to have some popcorn. Yeah. So. I think the last time you brought this t topic up, you actually asked what kind of candy people like. Yeah. So this is different. And I think we just established that we all prefer popcorn over candy. Mm-hmm. Because we're adults. Yeah, we've adulted, sadly. We've we've adulted, and now it's like, oh, the savory. <laughs> yeah, the salty, savory fillingness of a popcorn bucket covered in But when I was a kid sometimes. and ate sugar, it was going to be Junior Mints or Raisinets. Oh, yeah, Junior Mints. Woo, love those. I mean, I love a Raisinet. I love raisins. I don't care. <laughs> those yogurt-covered raisins, if they had those at the movie theater, that would be ideal. Mm. But they don't. No. Nope. Sneak it in. All right, let's go to the next question I've set aside for our reviewing times. What do you feel about... Nah, nah, that one's a little bit later, right? So, uh, simple, let's keep it simple. Do you prefer to go to the theater and watch a new movie, or do you prefer to stay at home and watch a new movie, given the options? Um, I prefer to stay at home these days. Gino? I'd really go to the movies. Because it's just fucking awesome as shit, dude. Me and my girlfriend, we went and uh, we went and watched the movie at the theater the, the other day, and it, uh, uh, I ain't gonna tell you what it is. But, tell us uh, what it is, damn it! Because I fucking forgot. But anyway, <laughs> it was awesome. So awesome, you forgot. Well, it was awesome that we was the only ones in the damn thing. Oh, yeah. I've, yeah. I've heard that this happens. I haven't been to a movie in the theater since uh, the beginning of the pandemic. Since, like, well, before no, the pandemic. Well, somebody bought the theater out, and uh, they, uh, they uh, called and said, uh, um, they said, oh, well, you, you can actually watch this movie. Uh, I said, oh, well, cool. So we was the only ones in there. I forget what the hell it was. Some, uh, I don't remember. It, it fucking sucked, but, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, man. Uh, I just woke up too, so I uh, have to have to like <laughs> the brain fog. The brain fog. Yeah, it'll clear in a minute. Me, I, I actually I kind of prefer going to the theater, but like here lately, it's just like yeah, I might as well just watch at home because I don't want to deal with people. Like the last time I went to the theater was for the new Bond film. And I hadn't seen anything in theater since, or before that, since the pandemic. So, the Bond film that I made an exception for, but man, it was sketch because all the college people came in on a Tuesday evening because our theater doesn't open on Wednesday and Thursday anymore. So that was kind of a horrible. That sounds awful. I'm glad I didn't go. Yeah, you would have. I would have been. You would have hated it. But luckily, they didn't say anything. They were a good crowd, so it was good. It was great showing. Everybody was just <gasps> what. And then it was just like, that's about it. Nobody was doing anything stupid or dumb like you would expect college kids to do. They were talking of a shit before the show, but then as soon as the movie started, they were all respectful. Everybody was quiet and just sat there and watched. So that was cool. So that was awesome. But that's the last time I went to the theater, see the theaters. And everything else I've seen has been at home. Mm-hmm. New release anymore. You can watch it just as it comes on. Just pay them like 20 bucks and boom. New movie. If I win the lottery, I'm going to... I'm gonna make a drive in. <laughs> drive in would be fun. Then you can have some. I'll have the classic block building. Uh, you have to walk to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, definitely. You have blue popcorn like in Chillerama? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> <gross>. <laughs> I'm <doing> shit, dude. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> oh, man. That's some good stuff. I just put like, you know. Blue. blue food coloring in the butter. Yeah, exactly. That's it. <laughs> These white yeah, uh, The Chillerama special. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. So, all right, last question this little segment. How do you feel about the new horror movie films we have been given compared to the past 20 years of things? What's your feelings about how more horror movies are being produced and more real good content is being produced versus what we had like 20 years ago when we were ki- kids and teenagers. Like, 20 years ago was... More like 30. Like, 30, whatever. <laughs> like, I was going to say, 20 years ago was like the year 2000, Mike. God damn it. All right. Yeah, so be, pre-2000. Exactly. Let's go pre-2000. So, but give me a decade. Are you talking about the, the just, you know, the stuff from the 90s or the stuff from... I'm just saying, how do you feel about all the, the new content that's constantly coming yeah. at us now? And how do you feel like, do you think it's better than when we were kids or younger adults? Mm-hmm. Or do you think it's just about the same? Well, I don't watch a lot of it. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of the, the like trendy ones, I guess. I mean, I have like directors that I like. And, you know, if something interests me, I'll, I'll watch some new stuff. But like a lot of the like series is, I haven't watched. I'll watch like a minute here or there and be like, you know, that doesn't really grab me. So, um... I'm going to go with, I like, I like the old stuff. Um, there's a few directors who are making some good stuff now. Definitely. And I talk about them on the show all the time, so people should know who I'm talking about by now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're a new listener, then go back and listen to it, and go, you'll get a better idea. Go back and listen to how much Madeline loves Camo Del Toro and Bong Joon-ho. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, stuff like that. I mean, there's some very good stuff coming out now. Um, But there's also, like, this stuff that's just kind of marketed to people who aren't, I think, in my age group. Mm. Who didn't grow up with, like, shitty B-horror movies. (laughs) (laughs) Who maybe, like... Like, maybe it's an improvement on some of the, the serial horror films from the 90s like I know what you did last summer or Final Destination stuff like that which I also really didn't follow they didn't jump out at me man really I love those films I, I watched I think I know what you did that last summer and then I still know what you did last summer and then I just was like you know this has been a waste of my life <laughs> um, but I think that that was really uh, Scream kicked that off Scream was great by the way yeah, the first scream was I great. Mean, Second scream, okay. Third one, yeah. right? Yeah, but they ran it into the ground like we always do, right? Mm-hmm. Like unless you're Shrek, you really don't need to be doing any goddamn sequel. 
Oh, God. You got any thoughts on that one, Gino? Uh, me, uh, I, I like the oldies. Um, um, I'll, I'll, well, I'll be honest with you, I like the ones even all, all the way up to uh, today. Uh, but I, I, have to, I have to go with the, the old ones, like the old the Hellraiser, you know. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm going to sound like a broken record. Texas Chainsaw. Yep. Mm-hmm. 1975. I think it was 1975, but uh, yeah. I'm going to go with the old ones. Uh, the classics. Uh, so, uh, the, the most. I'd say you, you just can't. You can't beat the, the film and the. Uh, at that time, and you can't duplicate that as hard. You, you're not going to do it nowadays. It look, kind of looks uh, kind of like a home video or something like that. I mean, it is I don't know. How, I don't. I don't. I don't know if anybody understands what I'm talking about. You can't beat that classic footage. Yeah, I agree. It was like on. Like you know, like the greedy look. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was on a film. It was a, it was a different film stock too, and a different processing style back then too, for a lot of things. But yeah, definitely that's true. Like me, I feel like yeah, I feel like the new like we're in a good era of horror movies. We're kind of like in a silver age possibly of horror movies because like right now we've had since '90s just all sorts of stuff come at us. But here in the last 10 or 12 years, we've had some really epic stuff come at us that's hitting the mainstream to the point that, oh, these are actually films, and this entire genre now has a little bit more of a kind of um, following, standing, uh, I'm trying to think of the term for, uh, like... Like respectability? Yeah. That it didn't have before? Because it used to be like, oh, you like horror movies? You must be dim-witted. Yeah. No. No, I just have a different way of looking at it. Yeah, and it's just like... But yeah, it used to be like people would look down their nose and go, oh, it doesn't matter how artistic it is, It all horror movie, the whole genre of horror is, is very lowbrow. Yeah, very schlock. Well, the fucking 90s had a real, uh, like the late 90s, they had a, yeah. it was a slump in the freaking horror movies because they wanted to do like a comedy shit. You know, yeah, man. they were all kind of like, oh, it was like, oh, this this actor's considered, yeah, well, you know, fucking college a sex symbol all of a like, sudden. Okay, some college kids are going to get fucking killed tonight. Right, again. Yeah, again. Yeah, that they was definitely it. And like I said, some of them are better than others. And it's like, where like this... personally, I liked The Faculty. The Faculty was pretty neat. <laughs> but... um, there were a couple of good jokes in, like, Urban Legend... Yeah. You know, um, you know, like here and there. And honestly, it, I might trash talk. I know what you did last summer. Um, but Jack Black's death scene in that, in the, the sequel. Well, like I said, you can't really me. fucking beat the classics of the 80s and the early 90s of like, uh, remember Jason, you got Freddy. Yeah, that I was mean, their Friday, era. I meant Friday the 13th, not Jack. Uh, not we know what you meant. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, and I'm not, a, I'm not the biggest slasher fan, and everybody knows that. It's not my favorite genre. But if I'm going to... It's a lot of shit, though. It's great. Yeah. Some better than others, like you say. Yeah. Black Christmas, bring it. You know? Yeah, that's pretty rad. And this is the kick-ass part of it. And this is what I think beats out the, the horror movies was the... Uh, trilogies. Yeah. So many trilogies. <laughs> yeah. That, that was the anthologies. And okay. the anthologies too, but yeah, like movies coming in threes was always kind of a big thing. Mm-hmm. Once they got to that point. Uh, you, all right, now, you take, like I said, Friday 13th, uh, all, all that shit, and uh, you take Tales from the Crypt, son, that beats out all that shit. It tells some couple of awesome. And uh, yeah, tales from the dark side of 
And I want to go back as far as the 60s and uh, say uh, the Twilight Zone beats out all the fucking movies. I don't give a shit. Yeah, because most of the movies are just rehashes or reimagining or just kind of, a lot of them are just like expanded movie length versions of those like 45, 35 minute old episodes. Anthologies are the fucking bomb. I, dude, I'm, I'm a big fan of anthologies and, and the, even the modern day ones like the, what was that one? Uh, what, the new Creep Show? Yeah, the, in the, yeah, the Creep Show. That was fucking awesome. I'm telling you what. And now there's a new modern day one that you let me borrow. Yeah, it's great. Like, it's a Shutter exclusive. It's yeah. it's great, man. It's awesome. I own, like, first season. I lent you that one. Some of them fucking movies, I'm telling you what, man. I'm a horror fan. And some of them I turned off. I'm just like, man, I can't take this fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> So, but speaking of uh, slasher movies and specifically yeah, yeah, Texas Chainsaw I mean, Massacre, son of a bitch to fucking scare. All right, Gene, pay, atten- hey, pay attention. Here you go, Maddie, go. Um, has anybody watched the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, uh, right, make a note. Yep. No, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it's it. Streaming no. on Netflix. Oh my god, like, we, uh, this is like, like yeah, two three months later. We should have already seen this. Yeah, Once. since February at least, or January, late January. Uh, we was working, we was sleeping, people. Yeah. We drinking cold beer, smoking cigarettes. Oh, no. No, not Mike. Mike doesn't smoke, though. Uh, let me... Wow. Great. Yeah, it, it just occurred to me. And you yeah. were almost right about the year, by the way. That, that was 1974, the original. Mm. You're off, Gina. But... About year, so damn yeah. So it's pretty good since you weren't even born yet. All right, Gene, you got you watch anything this week? Let's get to that. Have we seen anything? Watch anything? I that one film that you give me, Repo Man. Uh, would you? Not strictly a horror movie, but you Great know what? Sci-fi. It's got violence and supernatural. It's a from our genre with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we'll we'll say it counts. Yeah, definitely. It's got people doing crimes, <coughs> got getting sushi, not paying for it. People getting Flushed blown up, up, turned into stone, uh, piles of nothing. Piles of dust. Open up a trunk, get blown the fuck up. Yeah, that was such a good, yeah. Classic, classic movie. And don't get it confused with Repo Men, which is a different movie altogether. Repo Man, Emilio Estevez, mid-1980s somewhere. What else you got there, Gene? What else you got about that you want to talk about? What's some of your uh, favorite? Parts of that one. I don't know. Like I said, I left off on uh, where the black dude was like, uh, he's like, sometimes you gotta shoot back. It's just like blanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's when they were stealing like the the Ford or something. The Corvette. The, was it a Corvette? Ford Mustang. Corvette? Something. They weren't stealing. They or they were repoing. Yeah, they were repoing. Come on now. So, of course, again, you're doing a half yeah, review. I left off on that one. It was funny. It just, like I said, it's just 80s type of stuff. And it, it, I just like the cars. Yeah, everything was a big boat back then. I mean, I've seen so many Pintos in that fucking thing. It was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just such a fun film. Yeah, you're going to love it when you finish watching it. Because it gets a lot more fun and a lot more damn kind of comic like it's very comedic. oh it's comic it's com- it's it, comedy uh, slash all right it's for real for one minute next thing you know they throw in a little bit of laughter yeah and so i like that that's pretty good yeah so definitely y'all need to check out repo man that was a great film you can't go wrong with that if you got a night off and you can watch it on the streams or you find a cheap copy of it somewhere grab that one because that is a good one to have in your collection I mean I watch it like a, every year but like every few years you may want to see it oh yeah yeah you will so. the next one I'm going to watch uh, Mike and Matt here let me borrow this and the zombie women, women of Satan I haven't seen that one yet actually <laughs> so uh, I'm, after I watch uh, the repo man tonight I'm going to finish it and then I'm going to throw this one in there 
There you go. Zombie Women of Satan. Yeah, you're definitely going to dig that one, too. It's, um... Do you want to save your review for it until yeah, he's everybody's def- seen it? Yeah, definitely we'll save that review for that one. We haven't and yeah. I picked up another movie for three bucks, and I ain't never seen this one. It's called The Devil's Machine. No, that sounds... Boy, as God lives again. Oh, my. <laughs> that sounds like a good one. For three hey, bucks, can't be the price. Open, man. Three bucks for this, dude. Go to your thrift shops. Uh, if you're a uh, hoarder like me when it comes to damn DVDs and uh, VHS, it doesn't matter. Uh, I picked this one up three bucks, man. For sure. Can't beat that. That's awesome. All right. Let's see. Maddie, what you got? Oh, what did I watch? What did you watch this week? Um, I watched Chud. I watched Slumber Party Massacre 2 with you. Yeah. And I watched Firestarter, which I, I mean, rewatched Firestarter, but since I hadn't watched it since I was a kid, all I re- really remembered was that Drew Barrymore was pyrokinetic. Mm hmm. And um, that's all I really remembered about it. So it was like watching a movie I had never seen before. And do you qualify it as a horror movie? I'm on the fence about that, but if Repo Man passes, sure. I mean, it's a Stephen King movie, so yeah. there's that. You get the Stephen King cred. But, I mean, is it horror? I mean, it has supernatural elements of the well, people having, you know, telepathic and pyrokinetic powers. And then it has some real monstrous villains in in human suits that's cool um no i mean that they're just human beings who are actually just diabolical human beings so i mean it yeah in in a lot of ways i think you could kind of file, file it loosely it's more of a thriller but loosely in like some subgenre hmm. it definitely horror. wouldn't get thrown into drama at the old movie th- movie stores, then. I think because it says Stephen King on it, it's automatically going to be put in the horror section. There you yeah, go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that. Anytime I've ever found a Stephen King movie when we had video stores, mm. it was in the horror section. So, uh, I mean, it's it's not as you know firmly horror as some of his other adaptations of his work. You know, Pet Cemetery or Freddy waking you up in your dreams, but I, a lot of sci-fi movies and stuff like that, I put them in uh, the horror genre. I think. Yeah, it depends. I mean, is it scary? Yes, there are very scary moments in it. So, you know, and I mean, it has it touches loosely on horror. It's kind of maybe a kissing cousin to horror, but definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it in a while or if you never saw it. When Drew Barrymore was a child actor, and it had George C. Scott's in it, Mar- um, Martin Sheen's in it. It's just, and, um, oh, David Keith plays her father, does a great job. It's just fantastic. Start to finish, and it's like, uh, you know, there's a real, like, validating, cathartic feeling you get by the end of that movie. When, um, even though, like, you know, all this horrible stuff happens. Probably shouldn't her... spoil it. No. Yeah. I didn't spoil it. No, you Just don't spoil say it. say that, that her dad tells her, let him know we're at war. Yeah. You go ahead and burn it all down, baby. And you're like, yeah, burn it all down. <laughs> cool. Like, yeah. the whole time she's trying to control her powers and not hurt people. But, you know... There comes a point where you're just like, okay, this pacifism thing is not working. And I, I felt like, I think a lot of people can identify with that, especially with, you know, so many people who are othered for whatever reason, whether it's because you're pyrokinetic or because you're black, you know, or, or gay or whatever. There's, there's a lot of um, empathy for that character and a lot of connection. Yeah, and I think that's why a lot of people like horror movies because we like to find that person that we can relate to, and it's often you know, you know, not the villain, in spite of what people may think. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how was 
Got anything else on Firestarter? No. How was Chud? Chud is a surprisingly serious film. Really? I've never seen it. Um, the the yeah the the practical effects, the like, the Chud monsters, um, like sewer dwelling mutants. I mean, it's like totally like guy in a rubber suit with glowing eyes. <laughs> so to balance that out, they kept the acting like really fucking serious, like the whole time. Oh shit! And there's a great performance. Oh, I, I've got to look up his name because I don't want to not say his name. Um, but it's the guy you know from Home Alone. <laughs> Tool Man, or the or this like uh, other sidekick at the beard. This, yeah, um, hold on, I'll, I'll get you his name, yeah, the, the other guy, um, come on, man. <laughs> I have no idea. Not, what? If this were the 90s, we could run off his name just like nothing, but nope. Oh, gosh, I know, right? No. But, I mean, so they, many... they did a, a, a great job casting, too, I mean, John Hurd? Daniel Stern is the guy I'm thinking of. Um, I mean, John Goodman also has a brief, brief cameo appearance what? in Chud. But Daniel Stern, yeah, who played, um, you know, the curly-headed guy who was robbing the house. Yeah, the goofy guy. Oh, the, the goofy, goofy guy. guy. Okay. Wow. Okay, so I was thinking not that guy. So I'm thinking the other guy. Good deal. What? I'm thinking of the... Well, let me see if I can access the internet without the goofy guy. The, the curly goofy guy looks like crazy. Yeah, yeah, that guy. This is weird. Oh, yeah. What was that stupid damn movie? Tool Time. Guy. Tim. Oh, shit. Tim. No, 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 Tim. Home Improvement. Tim. Tim. The Tool Man Taylor. But what was his... Tim Allen. Tim That's Allen, okay. thank you. Good God, man, that was killing me. Yeah. Okay, now I'm getting really annoyed with the um, the World Wide Web. I don't even bring back those stupid memories. I hate that shit. Home <laughs> <I'm> Alone? <laughs> okay, but he is amazing in Chud. He plays this, like, homeless guy who, like, runs a, a soup kitchen, basically, but just helping all the other homeless guys and there were so many and this is okay this is what was interesting also john hurd was in home alone too and if you didn't remember that um uh it's it's it had so many actors that you recognized from home alone that you sit there thinking did john hughes have something to do with this film so I'm looking through the credits to give me any kind of indication that John Hughes was somehow involved in Chud, which I know in my heart of hearts <laughs> couldn't happen. Shouldn't happen. Shouldn't happen. Um, yeah, not Joe Pesci, but the other guy. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Anyway. Um, it's not it, Richard Karn <laughs> from Tool Time, who I was thinking. Okay. No. Um, okay. So what I did find out about Chud that was just really weird is um, because because I got on this, uh, you know, kick about John Hughes, I was looking through the, um, the credits and I saw the last name Hughes. And I thought, who's David A. Hughes? That sounds familiar. Credit him with doing the musical score. And what it is, is David A. Hughes and Mark Coop, Martin Cooper did the score to Chud. And if you don't recognize those names off the top of your head, it's because... Okay, I don't know why. Um, but they <laughs> were actually both members of the band Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. OMD. Now, I'm going to bring this all the way back around to John Hughes. Okay, OMD. Interesting. Right. John Hughes connection. I'm noting this The down. John Hughes connection. It was the... 
the in song in Pretty in Pink. If you leave. Uh, OMD. Man. Boom. So I don't know if he's actually related to John Hughes, although I seriously doubt it. But there's just so much like six degrees of separation happening there. I I could have researched that better, but I thought that was probably the best thing. That was the most coherent (laughs) thing about Chud, because a lot of things were just kind of like glossed over. Like what happened to the homeless lady in the tunnels? Like they just dropped her character halfway through the film. I mean, weird shit like that. Weird shit that did not that that could have hit the cutting room floor, and was left in the film, and then shit that shouldn't have been cut that we needed answers, and it was. <laughs> That's so bad. But the soundtrack, thanks guys from OMD, is spot on. There <laughs> it's got we that go. great synthesizer '80s horror movie soundtrack. Oh yeah. That you love and. Um, and you know, but besides that, the message behind Chud is um, government sucks. They don't care about the homeless. Nobody cares about the homeless. And um, and I mean that not as a, like, some, okay. That, yeah, the society in general, society at large, not me, um, but society at large kind of looks at, homelessness as a you know what not a bit you know what just those people's lives don't matter no oh, yeah they have no value and and that that message is is a really important message in the movie also the message of you know toxic waste and pollution and you know there's always that that sense of like the mayor in jaws who's like well as long as the press don't find out Let's just keep a tight lid on this. Monsters running around New York City, killing people. You know. So I mean, it was '80s New York, so that yeah, was probably yeah, right. yeah. I mean, it's it's a fine film. You're like, oh, they're just filming I, a trauma film. Let it go. It, it's a fine, it's a fine film. That not like, wow, life changing film, but um, I mean, not like. Slumber Party Massacre 2 level film. <laughs> Which jumps me to my review. <laughs> this week I sat back and watched Slumber Party Massacre 2 with no context to have ever seen the first one. Nope. Nope. No Never watched way. Slumber Party Massacre. Never watched Slumber Party Massacre. That was probably uh, the, the second damn movie, the horror movie that I watched when I was a kid. Slumber Party Massacre? <laughs> oh, yeah, but... Uh, I, uh, I was just a kid, and the babysitter, she was like, oh, we're going to watch this movie. And I'm like, all right. Oh, my God. So just remember, kids, the, the blood's just catch up. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But those are real boobs. Those are real boobs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, hell, you think we did? Well, shit, I don't care. Bloody boobs is great. I mean, yeah, we was <laughs> freaking, hell, we was like fucking eight years old. Boobs with boobs. Uh huh. Yep, yep. <laughs> no, it sounds fucking horrible, but <laughs> it's what it is. I mean, it's just like, oh, boobs. Oh, yeah. yeah. About the, uh, back when, uh, when it was still gross. A guitar that had a drill on it. That's the only thing I remember about picking it up at the, the at the fucking convenience store. It was like, all right, we're going to rent this movie and it's VHS. Is that the easy stop? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, God. I mean, they, they bring back the guitar with the drill on it. It looks the pretty. The driller killer. Is back. Pretty fancy. Pretty fancy guitar he's running. I just out. thought that movie was so fun. Now I do want to go back and see the first one. Funny Not going to lie. Funny as hell, my God. But, uh, funny as. I was laughing out loud. Yeah, it was great. And the gore. Oh. I, I, I still w- wouldn't show that to somebody who is eight years old. But no, I, probably uh, not an eight-year-old. No, probably not. No, maybe. I don't know. Kids nowadays, they're so weird. But well, uh. Well, the thing of it is, uh, they ain't gonna be. Wa- they ain't, ain't nobody watches shit like that no more. Oh. Well, you definitely got the option, but you have to like. I, I think. Yeah, we picked. I watched it on Shutter because it's one of the new releases this month for Shutter that they got the rights to 
throw out there. So we, I plugged it in and watched it, and I was like, ah, oh, this is great. This is yeah. Just if a I good had one. known the Driller Killer was like a fucking rockabilly and that it was a practically a fucking musical, I would have watched this the whole series like years ago. Oh yeah, a long time ago. I would have definitely probably watched this in the damn '80s if I knew that. Yeah. But another one, Friday night. Everybody oh fucking gotta Friday. watch that shit. Yeah. Friday night is fucking awesome. Friday night is awesome. But back to Slumber Party while we're still here. Let's get this out. Uh, it is directed by a woman. <gasps> it's Women's Cast. History Month. Yay. But this was done by uh, Deborah Brock. She did a bunch of little things. She was more of a producer in her later career. But she has like a lot of cred on the like movie world as a producer. And like a little bit directing now. But she did a lot of stuff. Damn, that's cool as hell. Yeah. It was like a... The Sally Girl was in it, and she did... She went on to have a real good career in damn the movie biz. She went on to produce a lot of things, too. But generally, unfortunately for the, the Driller Killer, his career kind of tallied up after four or five episodes, four or five movies, and he was pretty much out, which is sad. But... Party she directed Master something else I wanted, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo 66. Yeah, she's a producer on that Oh, one. she produced it? Yep. Co-producer. I really liked that movie. But she directed Rock and Roll High School Forever. Yeah, that was her big shebang. <laughs> I didn't watch that. <laughs> I don't know if I could do Corey Feldman and the Ramones. You didn't miss much. <laughs> it was good. Love you, Corey. It wasn't amazing, but it was what it was. But the funny Ronald Reagan High School, that kills me. Oh, so, uh, gosh. Yeah, Rock and Roll High School forever. So goofy, so dumb. Uh, I mean, I'm put it on my list there. I'll watch it anyway. But um, Just... Slumber Party Massacre, yeah, it's a good old slasher film. Classic them. We're friends in a band, gonna go to their one of the kids' mom's condos, dad's condo, and party all weekend. And it's just goofy. Those, some of the, the dudes are so douchebags. They're just such Oh my gosh, bags. you're like, yes, I can't wait for him to for that it. guy to ah, die. Damn it. Why is he still here? Just douche. Oh, man. But and it's just like, then when the killer arrives, she's like, what the fuck? Where the hell did you come from? And I believe I turned to you and said, he's kind of hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like like in, a, in a psychotic Lux interior kind of way. Exactly. That. It's like, you know it's really crazy and really going to kill you. But he's going to at least <laughs> sing you to death in like a good it's like singing the, way. It's like the leather of the pompadour. I'm sorry. I'm a sucker. He had the damn good boots and everything, man. <laughs> yeah. He had some good dance moves, too. So oh. he, he, was, he was the full shebang there for he a little bit. Elvis. What's that? I said he learned from Elvis. No, mm. there's a lot of Elvis. A little bit of Elvis. A lot of rockabilly. A lot of rockabilly. But yeah, I, I was, I mean. Did you learn from Otis Red? No. No. No, I was going with, um, <laughs> uh, because of the leather, top to bottom, Gene Vincent. Oh, yeah. Gene yeah. Vincent, yeah. Yeah. Gene Vincent, or like Vince Taylor, who also just Leathers took that out. off of Gene Vincent. But yeah, his attitude was real luxe interior. Yeah, the good. attitude it was really? very Lux interior Music because was, he was killing people. Yeah, that was some real, <laughs> that was some real cramped kind of action there. That kind of guy. Yeah, that was a that was a fun part in his like mouth, and it still is just like oh, this is good, but it's just like eh, I hate that guy. Can't wait for him to die, and you're just on edge. And then he shows up like, what the hell? This movie just took a big turn for the better. And frankly, I don't really like any of these chicks. <laughs> no, I don't like the girls either. It's like like eh. maybe the the main character could live. Who was that actress again? Crystal Bernard. As Courtney, yeah. No, but... I've got to buy this. What else was she in is what I'm asking. Oh, goodness. That I didn't dig into. Okay, well, I'm going to look at her face and then that. remember. Yeah, definitely pick that one up and put it in your weird collection. If you get a box set, it'd be even better. <laughs> yes, that I can, most, most... Yeah, that would be... Oh, awesome. yeah. She, oh, right. Was she the Wings girl? She was on Wings. That's... I was like... That's, I that just was got a like big thing for you. you middle-aged gonna... white woman street cred there. <laughs> Actually, it was my dad liked Wings. Okay, y'all. Loved Wings. <laughs> Wings was a great TV show. It was on like... After... Oh, that was fucking horrible. 
<laughs> it was good. You watched after the A team and all that. It came on later. Then you just kind of sat there. Yeah, man. I didn't even watch. I didn't even. I, I didn't even get further uh, through the through the first fucking episode of that. <laughs> God damn it, Gene. <laughs> you un damn cultured heathen. Dude, that was more like the like I said the tales from the crypt guy. Oh uh, wait a minute, y'all. But that's not like that's a, this is a middle of the day thing. Like when you were not playing, of course, like the rest of us were, like. In our era, in our time, people, we used to go out and play in the afternoons, and we come back and watch cartoons in the A team, then go out and play some more till dinner was called. If you had TV, because a lot of times we didn't have TV. This is true, but like, it'd be fun to watch Wings sometimes. Wait, did he actually have a musical yeah. career? I don't know. But yeah, that was. Atanas Illich? Atanas Illich. I don't know. He fought Bone. But there's he something called Sugar like Summer here that looks like an album like cover. Oh my goodness! And I'm gonna find it. <laughs> oh jeez! Right. We're just watching stupid shit like Alf. Alf, yeah, Alf, big deal then. The, Were those on the air at the same time? Which was fucking awesome shit, MacGyver, fucking the... tour of duty. I mean, damn, we're just yeah, but... we rocking some shit, not some wings. They weren't on the air at the same time. Wings is like, Nine like each. post dates that, that like, like ten years. Yeah, so maybe I watched it later in life, but still, it was still good. I don't care. I don't care. It was great. Yeah, Fuck I'm you. not. I'm not knocking MacGyver, but I will say this about the fucking Dukes of Hazard, and I want you to think long and hard. Don't even. Say you are moonshiners, all constantly on the lam, outrunning the law, and you paint your car the brightest, most conspicuous paint job of anybody who's trying to do something illicit. Why would they do that? As as a southern person, understanding bootlegging, why would they do that? Well, I know that they always outrun them, but you know, look if this why you wouldn't have to outrun them if you could just outsmart them. Hell, I could outrun him with a pin It was painted fucking yellow. Let's outrun t- Boss Hog. Yep. Yeah. And outrunning Boss Hog wouldn't be the hard. He's just driving that big limo caddy. I know. That thing was the, sweet. The horns. Yeah. I love it, dude. Wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't be much. Like, I could run, outrun him in my Ford nowadays. I could, too, but, he, like... He would run out of gas before he like, called me. say, like, one of these days, like, he smartened up and said, Ah, I'm gonna call in some feds. Then you might be in trouble with your bright fucking ass like <laughs> they'd be, orange they'd be in jail within a week if they called the feds <laughs> and the real feds and, showed up and boss hog man was the, was he everybody hated him but um i love the uh i love the dodge charger and everything but they're the cadillac i oh. tell you what if i win the fucking a lottery today i'd get me a cadillac and i'm putting some damn bullhorns on the motherfucker yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And the other thing you said you were going to do a few minutes ago. Just, need the fucking Cadillac. just big white caddy. Build, you have to big white a, caddy. a drive-in no, movie theater. Black. I, ain't, no, 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 I don't know. If you're doing the Boss Hog, you better make you're it white. You're doing the Boss Hog. Then you have to get a white suit, which is awesome. <laughs> so once no, a week, you go out on Sunday. Suit, but it's got to be a black Cadillac. You got, uh, that's not going to be well, the Boss you're Hog. you're not Boss Hog. You're not doing it right. You're not Boss Hogging it. You're not doing it right. Well, I'm the darker black. The black Boss hog. You're the... Yeah, that's basically what we were going to do with our Cadillac, Lucille. Oh, God, you better keep at it. I tell you what. I was going to put the, bu- the bullhorns on it, too. No, no. I told my son if he wanted to fix it up, he can do that. Oh, dude, he better. He, he fucking better, man. There ain't much wrong with that car. <laughs> no, there's... There's progressively... Yeah, it needs a lot of work, worse. but, nah, it's sitting isn't helping. But, yeah, definitely boss hogging it. It's 801, so we only got like 20 or 40 minutes of this left tops. Then we gotta go parent and pick up our kid. So let's wrap that up. Go check out Slumber Party Massacre 2. You don't even Seriously? have to watch the first one. You kinda get it in flashbacks and you just that's all I know. Yeah, uh, you you, and don't you be catch on day heroes. And, yeah. <laughs> but the but the funny thing about this was like the one thing that stood out for me in the description I read is uh <laughs> the main description. Courtney, the younger sister of the new girl across the street in the first film, is all grown up now, but suffers from nightmares about the big wet incident. That's <laughs> what it's called. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no. yeah, sploosh. But yeah, 
that's right there on the internet. It's there. So that was like our kind of co-review of that film, since that's something we did. And I watched on my own. I sat back and watched the new to streaming, whatever called Villains. It's a Bill. Let's see. It's a Dan Burke, Robert Olstein piece. They directed it. They wrote it. It's pretty low budget feeling. Real, not big sets. Not crazy going everywhere. It's just kind of in the kind house. Of indie film. Real indie feel. It looked indie. Good stuff. Like. Scar- is that one with Skarsgård? Bill Skarsgård. He plays Mickey. His girlfriend Makai Monroe plays Jules, and they're just two petty criminals trying to get to Florida to sell seashells. And that's it. They're just trying to. That's their big dream. They get to Florida. They'll go around, pick up seashells, paint them, sell them. And live off of that kind of beach bum in it. That's their dream. But along the way, they kind of yeah, run out of gas and misplan something and end up in this crazy middle nowhere house and fucking run into George and Gloria, played by Jeffrey, O'Don- Jeffrey Donovan and Kyra Sedgwick, who sure. is most famous for her The Closer show, probably. I thought she was most famous for being married to Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah, there is that, I guess. But I'm kidding, Kira. But the George Donovan plays a great Southern accent in this, and he's creepy, and she is just batty. I can see her like doing something like that. Yeah, she's got she's real, pretty. real insane kind of character in there. And then there's this that little girl they find in the basement, oh, nice. Blake Baumgartner, as you, Sweetie that, Pie. No, that's a spoiler. That's a spoiler, but. It's not that much. You just of a, said it's, it's a, new to streaming. It is. They find a girl in the house. What happens to that girl? I'm not going to tell you. But I will say, like, <laughs> damn, we Jeffrey. The spoiler alerts, but a lot of times we're not because. Yeah, I'm just going to say, like, his performance, his accent, his mustache, his look, like super crazy rich bad guy, like robber baron kind of bad guy feel in the modern era. Mm. So I love that. Mm-hmm. And she's just kind of, Kira's just crazy as shit in that. And they're just trying to get through it. Can't complain. It turned out to be a real enjoyable watch there. And a, what would I put it down as? Time. Blah, blah, blah. What was it? At one hour and 30. It was pretty solid. I couldn't hate it. I enjoyed it. The ending was good. Yeah. All the acting was on point. Everybody's performance was on point. Couple like uh, random people showed up, and that's about it. It was enjoyable. Check it out. It's on a uh, streaming right now. Villains, twenty nineteen, rated R. So maybe not let your eight year old kids watch it either. Probably. Probably not. Uh, another anthology by God that we forgot. <laughs> I'm kicking myself in the ass. That would be Night Gallery. Oh, oh, night yeah. Gallery. Yeah, that was fantastic. But. Fucking awesome as shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's our movie, our movie reviews. Kind of. We'll just. I will leave it off on Rim of the World. Go check that one out if you guys get a chance. It's a sci fi kind of horror movie with kids. It didn't live up to expectations for a lot of people, it but. It really didn't for me. It was just like, eh, it's okay. But it's a McG production, so hey. Yeah. If you're into the, the supernatural. That is one your kids TV can show, watch. Well, they I mean, enjoy there's it? there's some there's some references to alcohol and and sex, but nothing, you know. I mean, it's just mentioned. Yeah. You know. Um. Other than that, lots of alien monsters and explosions and irresponsible adults. Lots of gore. So you get you get a little bit of a Goonies vibe there. It's TV fourteen. Mm-hmm. It's twenty nineteen. It was all right. I enjoyed it, and I liked it. It was fun, quick little watch. I, can't, I thought it came in at, like, hour 38. Yeah. Yeah. Attack of the uh, Killer Tomatoes type shit. No. No, more like... Way uh, bigger budget. Yeah, way bigger. Like, <laughs> big, like Less ridiculous. Kind of like uh, Resident Evil Monster Chasing Kids. That's probably the best part of the movie, like, when that guy shows up and starts Resident Evil Chasing the Kids, mm-hmm. and that's just creepy. But it's a good sci-fi film. Could check it out, Aliens. Similar um, enough to attack the block, the British sci-fi um, horror movie came out a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. Um, attack only of the Shrews. Attack the block was actually a, a lot more gritty. 
I guess it's a different episode. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Different. Yeah. Whatever, you know. Remember, everything was attacking the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But, yeah, Rim of the World, the Rotten Tomatoes people hate it. They gave it 27%. Mm. I don't think... It definitely didn't deserve that. You go into it thinking it's just a sci-fi thing. It, its budget was good. The effects were good. The story was uh, pretty average. You like you come to like the characters. You don't hate right. Them. I mean, it's it's geared toward kids who really maybe aren't ready for like something scarier or maybe a little bit more adult themed. You know, it's a good like starter. Well, party yeah. massacre. No, yeah, it's a good starter before that one. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a upper party massacre. Yep, yeah. that might be our next. Well, I got started out on. No, I go for it. Anyway, Gene, that's probably something we'll have to damn go look over at Nam Orbit to pick up. Maybe go check out the Slumber Party Massacres. Hell yeah! Because apparently there's a third one. So I don't know. Don't know. He'll probably suck. But that'll be just that. Put, just put it this way: we wouldn't go in the fucking basement after we watched these movies. Yeah. So yeah, some movies definitely not. All it's right. Never a good idea. Never a good idea that going to a basement. After dark, ever. <laughs> yeah. Unless yeah. that's where your man cave is and, like, your party room and dark I mean, room. And... We can say this about Chud, too. Fucking every time. It's like, oh, what? what? Going into the basement. Damn. That's a big mistake. Never go into the basement, people. That's got to be, like, it's got to be <laughs> one of the rules. Daddy, oh, I don't want to go down <laughs> to the basement. <laughs> <laughs> There's something down there. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh my god, that's good stuff. All right, last question of the night. Then we gotta chip her off and go do other things for the show. It's it's a modern question for the modern era, but it's a curiouser one. I just kind of wanted to get your opinions on this, so we can get vilified by the universe. <sighs> Given the world's current obsession with it, who's your favorite Batman? The first one, the the one nice man with the. Michael uh, Keaton? Michael Keaton. Yeah, uh, with the Jack Nicholson as uh, uh, yeah. Joker. There you go. Gene's favorite. Off the box. Kaboom. Nice Bam, choice. Son. 100%, man. You ain't gonna fucking beat that Batman movie. You can't do it. No, that's a, that was a great Batman. My favorite Batman is the animated Batman from the animated series. That Batman was on point. No, you suck. <laughs> oh, shut up. And I'm gonna go with Adam West. Ooh. little TV show. It's not that I don't love the Tim Burton Batman movies, because I really do. Just Michael well, Keaton so. does not have the face of Batman. So when he takes off that costume and he's supposed to be Bruce Wayne, I'm like, no, honey. I, I loved it. I thought he acted the part perfectly. It's just a thing in my mind, as like a fan of the comics and stuff. I don't know. It, it just, I was like, why Michael Keaton? Just because you put Michael Keaton in everything, Tim Burton? <laughs> and Johnny Depp was not available to be Batman? <laughs> I mean, Johnny Depp had that square well, jaw, you know? Like, make no fucking Batman, dude. What? I I, like, I, what did I, you I, just say? That's a fucking horrible. That's why it's horrible. That's why the one I said was the best. Wait, which? what did you say? I didn't hear you. He's not a good Batman. Michael Keaton? No, uh, Tim. Yeah, yeah. No, you said Michael Keaton's the best. You were saying um, Johnny Depp would make a bad Johnny Batman. Depp. Johnny Depp is not a good Batman. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> Tim <laughs> Burton <laughs> tends to recycle the same actors. Am I right? We can all agree on that. Probably. What was Tim Burton's like? Was that the Batman was his first big film, wasn't it? Yeah. Big budget Batman. Big budget. Yeah. Hey, but, hey, listen, Johnny Depp, amazing actor, mm -hmm. but not a Batman. Okay, well, I've see never him seen him a... play the role of Batman, so... I couldn't see him as a Batman. I'm just saying. Or the guy from uh, from uh, Big Pirate, Fish. Uh, Edward Scissors and yeah. Yeah, definitely not the guy, not... Crybaby, yeah. Yeah, definitely would not make a good damn... I don't, I just, oh, I don't, man. Michael yeah, Keaton did a really Depp great job, you're, you're right. Man. Nobody would show up to that shit. Johnny Depp's made to be out, to be the weird character. 
Yeah. Not a serious scare. Oh, not serious like Batman? Fuck no, Batman's serious. He's going to kick some ass. Not in the Tim Burton movies. He just accidentally kicked ass. Yeah, there you go. He accidentally kicked some ass. Yeah, he definitely. Yeah, it was 1989, so yeah. I'm just 89 Joker. Yeah. He you was, know. Yeah, of course, he's going with Tim Curry as the second choice if Jack didn't sign on. So that'd been weird if Tim Curry was a damn Joker. That'd been pretty crazy too. Yeah, oh shit! But I mean, yeah, he would have. He would. He would have been a very good. Yeah. That would have been weird. What do you call it? The question mark guy. Yeah, oh, the Riddler. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was his. No, that's Jim Carrey, honey. He said Tim Curry. Oh. No, I... Tim Curry. Um. Uh, Tim... Yeah. Rocky Horror Picture, Picture Show. Tim Curry. Yeah, Tim Curry, amazing, amazing, amazing actor. That would have been an interesting Joker choice. That would have been an that interesting Joker choice. That would have been. I'll be honest with you. But yeah, that was his first big budget, so. Up, he looks. He looks scary. He's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but Tim let's Curry. see. When did he jump in? Oh, yeah. Then about, yeah, about a year or so later, that's when his damn uh, Johnny Deppness started hitting the damn screen. Uh, that's when the man, man, the bro fucking romance hit. Mm-hmm. The bromance between... Johnny Depp, his first movie, I think, was uh, Platoon. Probably, but his first Tim Burton was the damn Edward Scissorhands. And then he was in Chain One Jump Street, so mm-hmm. there was that. It was definitely that. Yep. So you yeah. see right through me, Richard Grieco. Yeah, let's let's wrap that up. That's a good damn and ender. Did you just have my girlfriend said the only the only man she'd ever leave me for would be Johnny Depp. So I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. At least we got a reference there. Good deal. All right. That's all we got for this week's episode. We are the Chainsaw Bar. Um. Anybody got any lap, wrap up thoughts we want to share for the world? Before I do the usual spiel about the hand washing stuff. Uh, fucking watch Night Gallery, the series. Yeah, we forgot about that one at one point in time. <laughs> watch Night Gallery, yeah. Yeah, it's like a later Twilight Zone. It's great. It's awesome as shit. Matt, you got anything you want to I'm share with the world? Good. All right. That is all we got. Um, let's see. What was I going to say? Da, 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 da. Hey, man, give us some fucking money. <laughs> We're out here putting herself out here, give wasting her time. Money. Oh, man. We're, we're taking their life from them. As we, they listen to this, we're getting like minutes on our lives added. That's yeah. that's our payment. That's how this they works out, Gene. It's just like. No, 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 no. Help. Give us some money because uh, we're going to do a, a <laughs> show out in uh, the Stanley. Hotel. Oh, that that little nugget. A that what? would be that would be a good one once we get our shit together and actually go go out to the damn overlook Stanley Motel out there and do a show. Oh, he yeah. wants that's his like yeah, Gino's yeah. want to do. But yeah, we gotta do a show out there in that, and and we're gonna watch the movie and then we're gonna uh, just talk about how fucking cool it is. That is definitely something on our bucket list of things we're gonna try to do. I think we've talked about that movie quite a bit. We have, but it'd be a little bit more creepy if we were there. If we could figure out a way to get to that one of those places. But that's not that's neither here nor there for today. And we're just fucking plane ticket people. God damn, what was I was trying to think? Oh wait. Ah, hold on. Let me check. We're not driving out there. Well, as you all know, we are on anchor. It's the most simplest way you can get your podcast out there. They provide you tools and junk. So if you got a chance, check out Anchor. If you want to get a basic start like we have been for the last almost three years now, <laughs> it's been a blast. We're, but we're not marketing, so we're not going there. We're not doing YouTube much, not hardly anything. What was I wanting to do? Here we go. Like I said, I'm, I'm ugly. I've got a face for radio, so there you go. <laughs> yep. So, Central Luzon in the Philippines, you gave us a listen. We thank you for that. We got a Philippines listener. This past uh, couple weeks. Nice. So that was pretty awesome. That's the newest damn location somebody's pinged us from on our Mudball Earth. Did they, was it the lightest episode or like sometime we were actually talking about Filipino horror movies? I don't know. but Because like, we've reviewed some. Yeah, we have. But this is the first one that got pinged here in the last two weeks. Oh, okay. So like somebody actually in the Philippines 
followed and seen us, and there we go. And later this week, I will be, once we get this edited, of course, I joined a Facebook group. So I'll be posting our, let's see, how I'll be posting a link to our podcast with this, uh, what are they called? Something, the dark side something. Hold the phone. The dark side of the moon. The darkness. Always the darkness. The horror. Let's see. What? <laughs> no, come on. All right, this is horrible. All right, uh, cigarette break. This is killing me. Yeah, man. Anyway, we're gonna be posting this to like a private horror podcast website group that I join. They can, they just kind of give people a jump. So who knows? Maybe next week we'll have a uh, more listeners. But just a heads up, people. Wash your hands. Social distance. Wear a mask if you want to. Definitely wear it around people in big groups because they still suck. And that's about all we got this week for our show. We thank you for listening. We wish you all the best. And wear you mask if you're ugly as me. <laughs> or if the ragweed's blooming where you are. Oh, yeah. The pollen's getting or bad. Or if you don't want to catch the COVID. Or catch the flu. Ugh, I or caught the, the flu. Or the sinus infection. Ugh, I caught the flu from that. I should have wore a mask and I wouldn't have caught the flu because the flu actually gets really stopped by masks. Screwed up there, boys. Screwed up there. But we yeah, thank y'all for listening. Yes, man. I'm telling you what, man. It helps out. <laughs> we thank y'all for listening. And that's all we got. On three. One, two, three. Vroom. Vroom. Steve. Cheers. Rock out.